Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I know I said I'm not gonna be doing any more mukbangs, but this is actually the only chance I get <laughs> to make a video. Cause baby is next to me, right baby? And hopefully he'll be, it's not hot. And hopefully he'll be cool while I record. So he's saying hot cause the light is on and he knows that it's hot cause he burned himself the other day. He touched the light bulb. I know, baby, it's hot. And he's eating his food. And here I have some sushi. Um, I ordered it from a new place. I'm a little bit skeptical. <laughs> so just, like, pray for me because it's always scary when you order from a new sushi place, right? It's like, am I eating poison sushi or is it, like, okay sushi? You know what I mean? Because you know you're never going to get, like, top-of-the-line sushi. So... I don't know. I don't know what this is supposed to be. I think like shrimp tempura. Okay. It's good. This spicy mayo tastes like um honey mustard. It's weird. Oof. Oof. So, as you guys know, when I first started my channel, I was not a mother. And I, like, wasn't even sure if I wanted kids. I mean, no. Let me not say that. I always knew I wanted kids. Um, I just always felt like, am I ready? I don't know. But... I decided to do it and I feel like I did it at a good time because like when are you gonna be ready you're not gonna wake up one morning and go I'm a thousand percent ready to have a kid you just know when it's a good time when it's a bad time holy shit so we went ahead and had our son which was of course a crazy amazing experience that I was, I was not prepared for, um, which is why I say, like, you don't know if you're ready or not. Wow. Um, you don't know what kind of kid you're going to have. You don't know what kind of obstacles you're going to face. You don't know what kind of pregnancy you're going to have, what kind of birth you're going to have. You just don't know. You can plan, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so... I like to say that having a baby was one of the boldiest things I've ever done because it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I made a video before about um, the condition that I had. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but they call it HG. And I was constantly sick. Like the first trimester, I was very sick. I was throwing up all the time. I was dehydrated. I just, I had no, I couldn't hold anything in my stomach, not even water. So that was really hard for me. And then once the second trimester came, I don't even know what I'm eating. This could be like cat. And I'm just like, I don't know. So if you're ready to listen to that all day, definitely get pregnant. So like I was saying, or I forgot what I was saying because I had to put my son for a nap. But basically like when I got to my second trimester, Everybody started treating me so amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, from the beginning, everybody was, like, super nice to me. Because, you know, when you're pregnant, like, you're like a princess, you know. So, when I started showing is what I mean. Like, I didn't start really showing till the end of my second trimester, I want to say. Um, that's when, like, you could really see. And it was amazing. Like, I felt good. I looked good. I could still wear my regular clothes. I didn't have to buy, like any special clothing i never bought maternity clothes that's one thing i was like no i'm not paying mad money for maternity clothes um it's disgusting how they mark up the price for those things so i didn't i didn't do that all i did was i had like a whole bunch of stretchies like yoga pants i don't know what you guys call it um we call it stretchies <laughs> so i had a whole bunch of those from express because those are like amazing pregnancy pants 
stretchies from express they're expensive but they're so fucking worth it they're so comfortable oh my god so i had a whole bunch of those and then like when i did start growing to the point that i needed new clothes i just bought like the next size up so i would i usually shop at like macy's so i would just order stuff on macy's seriously i would just order clothes on macy's and just size up to like a large or an extra large um just a heads up Macy's has a six month return policy, so if you wear it and then you give birth and you don't need it anymore, bring that shit right back to the store. Anyway, <laughs> so fast forward to the third trimester. I'm really short. So for me, like carrying all that extra weight is is hard. I'm sure for anybody it's hard carrying extra weight, but like it got to a point where I was just like really uncomfortable and over it you know like and really when I was pregnant I kind of like and this is gonna like lead into probably I don't know if it'll be this video or a different video but like I eventually had postpartum depression and I feel like when I was pregnant I just had this thing like I don't give two fucks I don't know I was just like I had like tunnel vision you know it was just like get through this give birth to this baby and then go on from there so third trimester I was, I was still working I worked up until 10 days no eight days before I gave birth that was hard too because it's like you're pregnant you're uncomfortable you're dealing with people at work like you're super frustrated you're just like I said you're over you don't care you don't especially at work when you're pregnant like you know they can't fire you and if they do you're like oh yeah bring a bitch what you oh you're gonna fire me oh if I don't do this you're gonna fire me oh okay yeah yeah let's see well let's see so you kind of have like that attitude like I wish they fucking would I'm pregnant um <laughs> well, at least I did so I just was like whatever um but yeah so whatever I got through it like my boss is really really supportive um everybody like at my company was really supportive and um took my vacation I was relaxing at home just you know waiting for it to happen and um the way that it happened was my mucus plug had came out I forget when it was my mucus plug came out it's like really thick like a huge like I don't want to say the word because it's like an ugly word but like a huge lungy you know what a lungy is like phlegm um it was like that so came out you know no cramps nothing it was like all right it's gonna happen soon i called my doctor he's like as long as you don't feel cramps or contractions um you're fine just you know wait it out so my mucus plug came out i'm chilling at home one day i'm like binge watching teen mom um what's the latest one that came out teen mom young and pregnant or some shit anyway so i'm like binge watching those bitches and then i'm like you know what let me sit in the tub for a little bit because i'm very much like I like to take a bath if I'm feeling like stressed. Excuse me. Oh, I'm like burping up that sushi. Um, or cat, whatever it was. So, I like obviously I'm pregnant, right? I'm fucking nine months pregnant. So I can't like sit in a full tub of water. So I go in the tub and I just like, I run the hot water. And I'm just like, I let it fill up a little bit. And I'm just like letting like the, you know... The hot water feels good on me whatever come out of the tub go in my room to get dressed I felt like something was gonna come out of my vaj so I'm like hmm let me go in the bathroom and let it out on the floor because in my bathroom at the time I had white tiles so I'm like whatever it is I'll be able to see what it is so I go in the bathroom and I let it come out and it's just like a clear liquid um so I'm like okay my water broke call the doctor he's like do you have any cramps I mean I keep calling them cramps he's like are you feeling contractions I'm like no um he's like all right um you still need to come to the hospital so we go to the hospital of course I have my bag ready we take a cab there and then I probably waited for like a couple of minutes before they saw me and they basically had to check if my water break, a water broke, because um, they don't, obviously they don't admit you right away. 
so they checked and they were like um your water didn't break that was bath water that must have came out of your vagina so basically i took a bath my vagina went sucked up water and then went and spit it out after um but they ended up keeping me because the baby's heart rate kept going down so it's crazy because it's like everything happens for a reason you know what i mean like if i didn't take that bath the water would have never came out and i would have never thought my water broke i would have never went to the hospital and god knows what would have happened so they kept me at the hospital i don't really remember like time stamps or to be honest i don't even know what time my son was born because it was just a whole big blur and like i have it on a blanket somewhere like his we and the time that he was born and all that good stuff um so like like i said it was just kind of like a big blur you know and really like childbirth honestly like that it's a traumatic experience um it's not anything to joke around about it's not to be taken lightly it's very serious so for me it was traumatic and I felt like it was it was like one of the first um I guess like you would say triggers of my postpartum depression it started like when I had him um so they ended up keeping me and then I just remember like being in the room and the room was like fine it wasn't like wasn't scary like I thought it would be um and by that I mean like it didn't I didn't feel like I was in a hospital room you know it was nice not a fucking like luxury but you know like it was it was good enough so I just remember like being there and I like obviously I wasn't in labor yet so I wasn't feeling any contractions I had no pain I was just sitting there waiting to see what the next move was gonna be so my doctor comes and he was amazing. I loved him so much. Like he was very calm and I'm not very calm. So I kind of like needed that to balance me out. Um, and he came in and he told me, listen, we're going to break your water, which I was kind of happy about because they didn't have to induce me, which I heard could be like even more painful and like a longer process. So he's like, we're going to break your water. And then he's like, he's like, about like 20 or 30 minutes after you're going to start getting contractions. That motherfucker broke my water and like two seconds later, <laughs> no, like two minutes later, like he was not even out the door when he was done. And I was like, um, epidural, <laughs> this shit, no, no. When he broke my water, it was really disgusting. Like, I wasn't expecting to be so disgusted by it because it felt like, it didn't feel like I peed on myself. It felt like I had a bad period accident, like something that you've never felt before. Like, it felt like all this, like, thick, gooey stuff just, like, poured out of me. It was just, I don't know. I was, like, grossed out by it, by the way it felt. Um... So he broke my water. Two minutes later, contractions start. The guy, um, the anesthesiologist came in immediately to give me the epidural. I was afraid of getting the epidural. I'm, I'm a chicken. So like really anything scares me, like anything with hospitals or needles or anything that I perceive as like potentially being life threatening. Like, oh my God, I can die or whatever the fuck. Like I'm scared. So the nurse that was there, I don't remember her name. I get like a little emotional when I think about her. She was so nice and she was so supportive of me the whole time. She helped me through it and I got the epidural. It was nothing like I, you don't feel pain. Like you just feel like a little pinch in your back and that was it. Um, or at least I did. And it was nothing compared to the pain that awaited me <laughs> after that because like I was numb but I wasn't fully numb and my contractions were not in my stomach they were in what felt like my ass so my stomach was fine I, I didn't feel anything 
it felt like a thousand knives were being shoved up my ass. That's what it fucking felt like. Those were my labor pains. And it just wasn't enough, the epidural that they gave me. So eventually, like I said, I don't remember time frames. I don't, I just don't fucking know. All I know is that after a while, I was like, I can't. Like, you need to give me more. When they gave me more, I remember I had to, like, sit up for it. Because you had to be, like, sitting up in order for it to go down a certain way or... I don't fucking know. Um, they gave me more. It kind of helped, but not really. Honestly, like, I felt pain the whole time. It was just... It was... Let's put it this way. I wouldn't want to go through that shit again, okay? Like, no. Um, it was bad. It was really bad. It, it's, like, in your ass, too. So it's, like, what the fuck, you know? I don't know. Anyways. So all I know is, or all I remember is that after that happened, his the baby's heart rate kept going down. And a few times they would, they would run into the room and be, like, turn over. And I would have to, like, turn over. And they would, you know, turn back this way. And I guess that would reposition the baby I don't know I was so out of it and like I felt like the epidural just like numbed even like my whole nervous system because I didn't even feel scared I didn't feel anything all I felt was the pain but like everything else was like numb um and it's weird because like I didn't feel fear it's very weird like I thought I would be more scared but I honestly think that the epidural like whatever part of my body that like I don't know but I just, I, I didn't have, like, the capacity to be scared. And long story short, all I know is that, like, I almost had a heart attack. And the baby, like, my heart rate kept going up and the baby's heart rate kept going down. So eventually my doctor came in and was like, we're doing a C-section. This is, like, too risky. That had me, like, fuck, I don't want to do a C-section. Like, I already had in my mind, like, I'm not going to have a C-section. That's why I say, you don't know. Don't try to plan it whatever will be will be your doctor knows best hopefully and you'll get through it looking back i'm glad i had a c-section because i don't think i'm strong enough to sit there and push a baby out of my vagina like i really don't think i could have handled that and if my pussy would have ripped no no just no okay i wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to handle that. <laughs> so they wheeled me in to the room. Now I'm now I'm kind of like scared because I'm like, I'm going to die. That's all I keep thinking is I'm going to die. Um, And again, like this is when like my depression started and like I was fucking like crazy in the brain after I had him. Like not towards him. Like it was never... I was always able to bond with my son. It wasn't that. It was just like in general, like dealing with motherhood was really hard. But that's going to be a different video because this is more of like my birth video and whatnot. Um, but I'm just like laying there. I'm like, I'm going to fucking die during the C-section and that's it. So what had me bugged out was that they had a mask over me. I guess it's because I don't like not being in control. And at that point, I was just completely not in control. I couldn't even move because the epidural legit had me numb from here down like i was fucking paralyzed so i'm laying down i'm crying like i'm bawling and my fucking snot is coming out and they have an oxygen mask on my face so now my crazy brain is telling me you're gonna suffocate on your own boogers because this oxygen mask is on you and you can't breathe now I'm just fucking losing my mind. I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm going to suffocate on my boogers. I'm just like, I don't know. They don't even, no one's listening to me. No one cares what the fuck I'm saying. Just, I, <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, no. Then my son was born. Everything went fine. There were no complications. My doctor did an awesome job with stitching me back up. You could barely see my scar. It's obviously still healing, you know, almost 18 months later. Um, it's not fully, well, like it's healed, but how do I say it? Like the scar is fading, basically. Um, so you can't even really tell it's there. Um, so that was great. After I had him, I remember being in the recovery room. Actually, no, when I was in labor, I was shaking 
this was after they gave me the second round of um the epidural i was shaking like 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 this like just in the bed like this like fucking like a crackhead just bugging out and but like and my cousin kept telling me like are you cold i'm like i don't feel cold like i don't know if it's that my body knows that I'm cold, but my mind doesn't because of the epidural. And that's why I'm shivering. Like, I didn't know what it was. I think it turns out it was like the epidural that was making me shake. Um, And then after I had him, that, I don't know where he, oh, I had an infection when he was born. So they had to put him in the NICU. And when I was in the recovery room, I was still shaking. And then I remember they brought me like a, a warm blanket, like a heated blanket. And then they put it on me and I was fine. The C sec like recovering from a C section is so hard. It is so painful. Like I guess it's one of those like you choose your battles. Like I say, I, I didn't want it. I'm glad I didn't have vaginal birth, but like at the same time, man, trying to care for a baby after a C section, that shit is no joke. And people don't realize that that's a major surgery. Like. You didn't get a tooth pulled. You got fucking cut open and a baby was taken out of you. Like, that's not something small, you know? And it was very painful. And if you think about it, like, it's your core. You were cut at your core. Like, you can't... You can function, but it's really fucking hard. And, like, for me, I was having a hard time because... Okay, I just had a C-section. This is my first child. When I was pregnant for him around like Easter so I think like a month before I gave birth I pulled something in my back it never healed when I had my son the pain got a thousand times worse I ended up having to go for an MRI like a, a couple months later um or like a month later because the pain was unbearable I couldn't even move I was like bedridden with a baby so imagine how that turned out it was a fucking shit show because I couldn't be bedridden that's my point like I had to keep moving um, so I couldn't rest, um, but because the pain in my back was so bad, and then I had the pain from the C-section, I was so devastated. Like, there's no words to explain how that feels. Like, you're taking care of your child, you know what I mean? Like, he was just born. My whole, my whole existence is for him right now. And I can't, I don't even feel like capable, you know? So being in so much pain and feeling like alone, honestly, I felt very alone. It was just devastating for me. And I feel like that's when my depression started and just everything kind of like spiraled out of control for me. Um, in my opinion, it never affected my child because I think I'm a good mother. I know I'm a good mother um and I'm very close to my son it never it never stopped me from bonding with him I know that some women it can get in the way of the bonding between them and their child but that didn't happen to me um but it was very hard so you know I just couldn't wait to go home and I know that I had him on a, I went in Tuesday night I had him Wednesday morning and I didn't go home till Saturday I think yeah, it was Saturday, like, afternoon, early afternoon. I couldn't fucking wait to go home. Because let me tell you, being in the hospital, no. I don't know, like, you women who have, like, more than one child and just do this shit over and over and over again. I'm like, how? I just... My refrigerator makes, like, scary tapping noises. And, like, I don't like it. Anyways, so I'm like... I was just like so devastated I couldn't wait to go home and like care for him at home and just have my stuff with me and not have to ask nurses for things or whatever like I just I couldn't wait and then you know how do I say it? like you just want to be in your own element mm -hmm. you know you don't want to like and I I had somebody sharing the room with me too she didn't bother me at all. Like, she was a new mom also. And, um, but it's just, like, I'm not used to that, you know? Like, I'm used to being alone or, like, being with my own stuff. And I just felt, like, very out of place. And then, like, she would turn the light on sometimes. And, like, 
be like, fuck this bitch. <laughs> you know, like, go to sleep. Why do you have to pump? Um, I'm being honest because I was just, I didn't, I didn't breastfeed. Um, that didn't happen for me because he was in the NICU. He was fine. They just had to monitor him to make sure that he didn't have an infection, which he didn't. Um, so yeah, I was there, I think like one whole day without him and then they brought him to me. But I didn't breastfeed him. He was like straight up bottle fed. And I, I tried, but I kind of like always knew it wasn't for me. Like, I don't know. I just didn't want to do it. So whatever. I'm sure I'll get like comments that are like, you're supposed to breastfeed. Ah. Well, I didn't want to. So whatever. Um, but yeah, I plan on featuring him in a video at some point. It'll be hard because he sees the camera, not the camera, but he sees the iPad and he's like, eh, ah, he wants to watch videos and shit. So I'll try to get like some footage of him. But yeah, that's kind of like the short, kind of short version of like my pregnancy and my birth experience, my birthing experience. Um, I do want to talk about like after I had the baby and what I went through good and bad and just like um the events that followed after I, I gave birth and you know maybe hopefully hopefully this could like resonate with at least one viewer because I feel like people don't talk about this stuff in my opinion I, I'm sure there's videos out there I'm sure there's plenty of women who um discuss these things but I feel like more times than not it's like very like an idealistic experience you know like an amazing pregnancy and these fucking maternity shoots that are like super produced and just like you know oh my god i'm pregnant uh beautiful um like no my experience was not like that and after i had him i was like i'm not having any more kids like this is this is wild. Like, welcome to the jungle. <laughs> because from the moment you're pregnant, shit changes. The moment you find out you're pregnant, <laughs> shit changes. And yeah, it's a lot. So that's all I have for you guys today. And I'm anticipating him waking up from his nap. It is 6.13 that's another video my child does not sleep does your sleep because mine doesn't um he's on a crazy ass schedule and he's taking a nap madly so wish me luck take care